This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. This is from Francisca, and here it goes. She says, if it wasn't for you, Patrick, and Relevant Radio, I wouldn't be on this amazing path to heaven. I am coming from an atheist converting to Catholicism background. Your show saved me. Jesus saved you, of course, but I know what you mean. Your show has saved me, opened my eyes, and answered so many of my questions. It's like every time I have a question, someone calls you about it, and it's answered. I haven't missed a single episode of your show since my husband turned me in your direction back in 2022. That's a lot of shows. She says, thank you for all you do. I start RCIA later this year. And there's a heart emoji at the end. Well, thank you. Excellent. Isn't that great, Cyrus? From atheist to believer. I love it. And Mm. she is not alone. This is true. She said, I have two questions about the Holy Eucharist, and they're related. So the first one is, Jesus broke bread with his disciples and told them, with this bread and wine, you will have life within you. He only did this one time with his disciples. He didn't tell them to come back next week and get more life within you. Why do we have to repeatedly take the Eucharist after the first time we partake of the body and blood of Jesus uh, when we have him within us? So I'll pause there. Well, you're right. I mean, you're kind of right. So the first thing to note is that Jesus did indeed celebrate the Last Supper with the apostles, and it was there that he instituted the Mass, as we would call it. He gives the apostles a command to do this in memory of me. Now, we also see that Jesus, after the resurrection, he was not recognized by some of his disciples. And on the road to Emmaus, he met up with them. They didn't recognize him for who he was. And at the end of the day, they went into a domicile of some sort, and he broke bread with them, and we're told that it was in the breaking of the bread that they recognized him. And so the church fathers, commentators, they see in that an allusion to the fact that it seems that Jesus celebrated the Eucharist again with them. That that may well be what it was. In, In other words, he he reenacted, you might say, at least a portion of what happened at the Last Supper. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. And we also know that the apostles had the command to do this in memory of me, and so they did. This is why in the Didache, which is an ancient, very, very early document in which we see a great deal of the church's liturgical style of worship, and other things besides the sacraments of baptism and other things, we see that they did celebrate the Eucharist on the Lord's Day, on the first day of the week. And so this is something that they recognize that he, although he said to them, take and eat, this is my body and this is my blood, they understood him not to mean that this was a one-time only thing. And that gets to another little nuance here, which is, the you've heard the phrase, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So just a quick tutorial on that. That's a way of summarizing the reality that when transubstantiation takes place, when the priest at the altar at Mass says with the host of bread in his hand, specifically the words, this is my body, which will be given up for you, that's when the miracle of transubstantiation takes place. The appearance of bread remains, all the physical characteristics of bread remain, but the reality of Jesus now replaces what once was the reality of the bread. That's the transubstantiation. Substance does not mean like a sticky substance on the kitchen counter. It means the reality of a thing, the substance of the thing, the essence, you might say. So that now has been replaced, that being bread, has been replaced by the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, glorified, resurrected, and truly present in a sacramental and substantial way, but still under the appearances of bread. So what once looked like bread before the consecration, because it was bread, still looks like bread, even though it's no longer true bread. It's now the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And same, all of the same applies when the priest says the words of institution over the chalice of wine, the wine becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus with the appearance of wine. That's an important nuance so that the next part hopefully will make a little more sense. So when we receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, we do indeed have the real presence in us. You have the real presence of Jesus, or I should say you will, 
when that blessed and glorious day comes and you have been baptized and you will receive Holy Communion and you will be confirmed. What a big day that's going to be. I'll be there with you in spirit, by the way. And when that happens, Jesus' real presence is really in you because it's really in that host. And if you have some of the precious blood, it's truly present there. But the real presence of Jesus is ephemeral. It only lasts for a short time. And what the church teaches is that when those things that once were bread and wine begin to no longer have the properties of bread and wine, the body starts breaking them down, in other words. In the mouth, in the stomach, it, things get broken down rather quickly. So they begin to lose the properties that would you could say, well, this is bread, properly so-called. Then the real presence of Jesus is no longer there. So, not to put too fine a point on it, it helps people to understand that when you receive our Lord and Holy Communion, he's not going through the entire digestive system, if you follow my meaning here. So it lasts for a number of minutes. How long is it? Mm, I don't know, maybe five minutes, six minutes. Some people say 15 minutes. I don't think it's probably that long, because I think the body breaks down what once was bread faster than that, but I'll leave that to the scientists to decide on that. But that's why when you receive our Lord in Holy Communion, to answer this part of your question, his presence is no longer there after several minutes. And so when we are called to partake of this Eucharistic feast, every time you receive our Lord, you receive him anew. Your soul is strengthened with sanctifying grace. And it's true that the more often you receive Holy Communion in a state of grace, the stronger and holier you become, because the, it's the power of Jesus in the sacrament. It's his grace, it's his power that is present in the Holy Eucharist that is conferring to you and in you that sanctifying grace. This entire episode of The Patrick Madrid Show is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening.